Hello everyone, uh, today I'll be doing a review on the um, DJI Phantom 4, which uh, was sent to me for review for a few days um, by Movidius, which is a company that makes the chip which uh, manages all the sensors on the Phantom 4, which allow it to have um, features such as Active Track and Tap Fly, as well as the Smart Return to Home, which uh, really make this the outstanding consumer drone on the market at the moment. And um, this drone isn't actually on the market yet, as in it has, it's been released, but it hasn't been sold yet. Um, so I it was I got really lucky to be able to review it before pe other people, um, and that's all thanks to Movidius, so a huge thanks to them. So, let's get to it. So, here's the box. Um, and it's pretty small, it's pretty good, um, and I'm really happy with actually the way that they've built this box, because it's, it's a pretty durable foam, I mean obviously if you use it all the time it's going to get pretty beaten up, but it's pretty solid and you can keep everything in here, everything except for your iPad or iPhone or whatever you're going to use, um, you can just keep inside of this box, um, including the charger and uh, the radio and everything else. So let's get to it. So, something I really like about this box is this little, it's actually metal, this locking mechanism, which, that's not going to open, uh, which is really good, and then, as soon as you want to open it, it's really easy, and it works great. Um, so, this is what it looks like uh, inside the box. So you have the Phantom 4 here, the uh, radio here, and then your props here, the manual and cables and such here. Um, you can fit your charger in here. I have the charger is just out here because uh, usually you have no need to put it in the box. I mean, unless you're actually traveling with it. Um, so yeah. Um, so I'm gonna put the box back on the ground. I'm gonna have a look at the individual um, parts. So first of all, the new radio. Um, I guess it's, it's an updated version of the previous radio, uh, which is, I'm actually very happy with this radio, the way that it works, the gimbals feel good, the, the, like, holder for your iPhone or your iPad or your Android phone, um, it's really sturdy and, um, yeah, it's, it's really good overall, I'm pretty happy with it, I mean, it's pretty basic, but, I mean, for a basic radio, it does the job, and it's very similar to, I've flown the, um, the Inspire, and the radio feels very similar. I haven't flown anything, rec any of the Phantoms recently, so I, I can't recall uh, exactly how the radios felt, but this feels really good. I'm pretty happy with it, uh, but just put this to the side for now. Obviously, it comes with the charger, um, so you can charge your flight battery as well as your um, radio at the same time, which is really good. I mean, so then you don't need to worry about charging them separately. Yep, nothing really else to say there. And so here is the Phantom 4. Um, it's very clean, looks really good in my opinion. I mean, it's really solid as well, it's very rigid, and the, I feel like they must have put something in here, I, I doubt it's just the, the uh, blow molded, or uh, injection molded plastic that gives it this rigidity, there must be some carbon fiber or some other, something in there that uh, gives it this strength, because it's really solid, and I'm really happy with the way it works, because um, when you have something really rigid, a especially quadcopter, like I fly the racing quads, The I fly an Alien 5-inch, if anyone knows what that is, um, and the there's the, absolutely no flex in it, and it makes it fly really, really, really well, because it makes it fast, and it doesn't flop around the corners, and it's it's really good. So, um, and I when I flew this, uh, I noticed that like the handling felt, felt like it was solid um, and didn't have any like play or anything. 
So here we just have the intelligent flight battery, and if you just click on it, it'll tell you how much um, voltage you have in there, how much percent battery, which is really good. And then when you want to charge it, you just plug this in here, which is really good. And actually, something I'm really happy with is that you can plug this in both ways. It doesn't actually matter which direction you plug it in, which is great because um, you don't want to be frying any batteries. Although, I'm sure this charger, if it could only plug in one way, would um, regulate that. So. There's a pretty big hole in the um, the Phantom 4 uh, where the battery goes, and the drone maybe weighs a little bit more than the battery, but it's pretty close. Honestly, the I'm really happy with the way they've built this. It's very light, except for the battery, but I mean, you can't really make batteries um, lighter than... really lighter than this, um, which is really good because you get the longer flight times, and uh, you get more agility faster. It's really good. Um, so let's just talk about the gimbal for a second. So I'm just going to take off this. It comes with this little protective thing so that you don't damage the gimbal while transporting it. Let's put that in the box for now. This gimbal is now integrated. I don't know if you can see, um, it's not one of the gimbals that you just stick on anymore. It's one of the gimbals that, uh, is like built as part of the actual frame. And it's very well balanced, uh, so if I just move it around, it's pretty well balanced in the first place, which is really good because the motors don't actually have to do much work then. Um, although if it was really unbalanced, uh, motors have to do a lot of work and it'd be um, very easy to burn out the motors, which would just be a bummer. Because um, I'm not, I doubt you can actually replace these motors. Um, so. There's seven sensors, actually, so there's six sensors and then the HD flight camera. Um, so you can see the two, two ultrasound here, the ultrasonic sensors. You have two infrared sensors here, which are just uh, infrared cameras, I believe. Um, and you have the two also infrared cameras on the front. Um, and then, yeah, so, all of these sensors are managed by a chip that's made by Movidius, which is the company that's uh, letting me review this for them um, as a pre-release uh, review. And um, great, a huge thanks to them for sending me this, honestly. It's very nice of them to do that. Uh, and I'm just trying to give you a, as much of an honest review as possible, uh, what I like and what I don't like. Um, and these sensors, They've done an incredible job, um, both with the software, um, the software that they've used to manage these sensors, as well as just the hardware, because if you try to fly into something, it won't let you fly into it, which is really, really good. Um, so I actually tested this, and I, I'll show it in the flight footage at the end, uh, is there's this, I flew this at just a local park, and I actually didn't get that much flight time in because... Um, it's been raining a lot here in California, El Nino is here, so, um, but I f tried to fly into, like, purposely, f I mean, obviously flying slowly, tried to fly into a, uh, just a little sign, and it detected it, and it, I was full forward stick, and it wouldn't let me fly into it, which is really good, because this is, like, 1400 bucks, you're not gonna wanna, uh, hit something, and, um, and then ruin your purchase, uh, which would just be a bummer. Um, and so, what else? Um, the sense and avoid system also works when you're doing the return to home. So if you fly, fly this, in, like say you have a very tall tree in between you and the, the quadcopter because you're filming, I don't know, something on the other side of the tree. And then, you're running on low on battery and you hit the return to home or maybe you lose uh, signal and you want to return to home as soon as possible uh, you can just click the return to home button or on your iPad or whatever and it'll come back uh, it, it'll just come back avoiding obstacles along the way which is really really good um, and I will also I tested that as well um, so I will uh, talk you through the video footage so this is the start of the video footage, and 
just so that you know while I'm talking, this is sped up a little bit, so it's twice the speed just so that this uh, video wouldn't be very, very long. But I'm really happy with the video quality as far as um, the HD camera goes, and I'm overall very happy with this quad. I have a few more points to point out uh, as this video continues, but I'll do that then and I'll let you enjoy the footage. So here's where I start to test the active track. Um, so I've just selected myself here and then I just go running around. And something I wasn't aware of at the time is that um, you could actually make the drone follow you in the software. Uh, but I wasn't aware of that when I uh, did this. So all you see is the um, gimbal follow mode instead of the actual drone follow. And I'm sorry about that. I uh, just missed out on that. So here it actually loses me, which is kind of funny. I didn't actually notice this before, but it didn't track me that time. I'm not sure why, but as soon as I reselected myself, it worked great. Um, and I'm sorry for my little silly hopping there because uh, the <laughs> The grass was wet and I wasn't trying to get my shoes too wet. So here I'm testing the tap fly. So I just tapped on like an area ahead of me and it just flew straight, just straight out, which is really good because I could actually um, do the gimbal work uh, while it was flying itself. But as you can see, it actually did stop before the trees. Um, and here I'm just flying around. Um, it was a beautiful morning. Uh, it rained quite a lot the night before and I'll just let you enjoy the video footage for now. So here, um, my dad was just trying to catch it, see if it would identify his, um, I guess, arm as a um, landing point. And I just took off uh, right off again. And something I wanted to notice, uh, or I wanted to note, um, is that at the right there, uh, you could see the props come into the the view of the camera, and that's because I was flying in the sport mode, I guess the racing, whatever they call it mode, and what I really don't like about it is that it'll let you tilt the camera far enough forward, or it'll let you tilt the drone far enough forward to see the propellers, but the as soon as you let go of the sticks, it stops immediately, and then you can see the, pro the props in the footage even more, and I really don't like that. I really wish they like made it so that the the accelerometers and um, GPS had done like less was doing less to um, correct for that in the sport mode. That's one thing I really would have uh, liked to see better. But as you can see, the flight or the flight video is really really good. I'm really happy with it, honestly. So at this point I was testing the uh, sense and avoid system. So I was full stick, full forward stick there um, towards that sign and it wouldn't let me fly into it, which is really good. I mean, the the way they've done that so that it won't let you fly into it. You, again, I tried to fly into this fence and it wouldn't let me. And I didn't expect that because the fence actually is hard to see with cameras because there's a lot of holes in the fence. Um, so I'm very happy with that. Here's when I tried the uh, smart return to home. I mean, obviously I didn't really go in between the any trees or anything because I wasn't trying to damage this, but it comes by r back really fast, and then it just comes down very slowly. Um, and I was really happy with the return to home. And it's very precise. Exactly where I'd taken off from is exactly where it landed. Um, so, yeah. I hope you enjoyed my video. Um, like, subscribe, and comment if you uh, have any questions or if you like this. Thank you so much. Bye.